everyone, it's Jessie from Bear Flower Farm. Today, I want to talk about a flower that I have grown to absolutely love this year, and that is lilies. We're going to talk a bit about what kind of lily this is. This isn't even a rose lily. But the reason why I wanted to do this video is because it was hard for me to find resources that talked about harvesting lilies at various stages. Now to preface, before this year, I had not grown a single lily. I used lilies in my market bouquets last year, purchasing them from a local grower, but I had not grown them. So I took the lily workshop, which was really great. And to me, the, the value out of that workshop is teaching you how to treat lilies like an annual and to succession plan your lilies throughout the season. So what that means is that a lot of people perennialize lilies, they all kind of come up within a certain amount of time and then they're done and then their lily season is over. So the tulip workshop is really great if you're trying to extend your season with a focal such as a lily. So to me, the real value of that workshop isn't just learning how to grow it, it's really later on when uh, you are extending to the shoulder seasons when no one else has lilies. So. I'll do a separate video on my thoughts on the Lily workshop after I hit that shoulder season timeframe because I really wanna give it some more time. But everything I'm gonna talk about in terms of when to harvest lilies is from my own personal experience and from my learnings. So um, obviously the information I get from the Lily workshop is not mine to share and I would encourage you to look into that workshop if what I just said is interesting to you. So all that being said, there are really two things I want to cover in this video. One, I want to talk about when to harvest lilies, and this will be dependent on when you need your lilies for. So it could be tomorrow up to a few weeks out. Lilies hold very well in the free, not in the freezer. The lilies themselves hold well in the cooler. And I want to show you a little bit of just what they look like after being in the cooler for a few days, a few weeks. And then I'm going to talk about some of the varieties that I'm growing that are just absolutely stunning and have made me reconsider lilies. So let's get started. All right. Oh God, nothing like harvesting after a workout. Put these on the ground. Oh no! Oh no! This here is the scarlet lily beetle. That is not what you wanna see. They will ruin your lily. So I have to basically kill them. And yeah, so I'm seeing more of these now and they leave this like residue. Basically they cover their feces, or sorry, they cover their larva in feces so that they have a higher chance of surviving. But if you see this, you wanna get rid of it and they are, predominantly in the Northeast. So that's why it makes it hard to grow lilies outside. Let's start talking about when to harvest lilies. And we're gonna start from wanting to hold lilies for a few weeks in the cooler or the fridge down to you wanna hold it for maybe a day up to a few days for something like a market or even a wedding. So this here, believe it or not, has been in my refrigerator for three weeks and it's still not even open. So I'm gonna put a photo here where it shows when I harvested this. So typically, if you wanna hold a lily for the maximum time possible, you want to hold it when the bud starts showing a bit of color and that's the first bud. Now my personal experience has, showed me, has told me that if you wait a little bit longer for that second bud to also start color up, you're gonna have a much higher probability that the rest of the buds are going to open. So I'm pretty confident that all three buds on this will open and they will open beautifully. Sometimes you will get a lily like this. This is a completely different variety. So different color, this is like a double lily, but do you see these smaller buds over here? These are unlikely to open. So there are cases where when you harvest something like this and then that very small bud is not at all colored, it's still very small and immature looking, they may not open up. But honestly, in a stem like this where you have, I don't even know how many buds are on here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you don't need all of them to open up. You need three or four to open up and it's already gonna put on a show. So this shows you how 
how long lilies can last for in the refrigerator. And the great thing is that when you harvest at that, that initial sign of coloring, that lily is a lot less fragile in the refrigerator. So I made the mistake of waiting too long on some of my other lilies. So a good example would be this one. This one, even though there is color, so this is a lighter lily and this one is less colored, you can still harvest it. This one, as you can see, is starting to open up. At this stage, when you start harvesting and putting it into the fridge, it's going to hold, but this bud is way more fragile than if you were to harvest this at the crack of color showing. And this becomes relevant if you don't have a lot of fridge space or cooler space, if you're cramming a lot into a bucket. I had a couple of instances where I was trying to shove stems into a single bucket and then some of these heads would fall off. And then the other piece is that you have less room in terms of workability and time. So let's say that I had to make like 20 bouquets and I had to make them in very hot weather. If I put these out, even though lilies do really well out of water for a period of time, these are gonna start opening and then they become a pain to wrap. They become a pain to transport, especially to market. So it's just something to be mindful of. But this here, if you harvest it and put it in the fridge, will buy you, I would say about a week or so. So this is the stage that I would harvest at the absolutely last stage in terms of I need it for a market in a couple of days, or I need it for some sort of wedding event. Maybe I'll leave it in my fridge for a week and then I'll take it out a few days before I sell it to the florist, who's going to then use it a couple of days later for a wedding. So obviously if you have higher temperatures in the room that you're working in, the lily will open up faster. Flower food also helps facilitate that too. Now, the trickier part with harvesting is what if, if you get a lily that's either white or yellow, a pale color where it's not really budding up. So in that case, this variety here is called Corcovado. It is an oriental trumpet. Whoops, that is not a Corcovado. Let me get out two stems over here. I tend to wait until the petals start lifting to be absolutely sure, because what I don't wanna do is harvest it so early that I'm only gonna have maybe like one really good bud. I want at least two of them to open up. So even when I harvest at this stage over here, you can see that this is just starting to lift this will start blooming in about two days in room temperature which is around 70 degrees if i put this in the fridge i'm probably going to get at least another week out of it so the takeaway is if you harvest at the crack of that first color maybe the crack isn't the right word if you harvest at the hint of first colors on the first bud you can take it very very long in the fridge the con part of it is maybe not all of the buds will fully develop, but it will buy you the most amount of time. Um, and then you can harvest up to the petals just lifting for something that is uh, a little bit closer. So I would say that there are stages like this where clearly the bud has started opening. This is also a really good stage to harvest if you have a market in like a day or two, if you have a wedding in like three days, let me show you some other ones. This one over here. See, these were the ones that I just harvested before. Now, if you harvest at this stage, this is what it's going to look like when they start opening up in two or three days. So I picked this one at this stage about three days ago, put them in my study, which is 70 degrees ish. And this is what they look like on day, we'll call it three and a half right now. Absolutely gorgeous. This stem over here is the absolute latest I would harvest. This is basically about to open. This is not gonna buy you a lot of time in the cooler. If you have a walk-in cooler and you have a lot of space, this is totally fine to store. 
the lily is at its most fragile point here. I've lost a lot of buds at this stage. So if you have a cramped refrigerator where you don't have a lot of room, I would encourage you to use the stem as quickly as possible hold it somewhere where it's dark, like in a root cellar, where the temperature is just naturally a little bit more cool than what it is outside. And you'll be able to use this in a market bouquet and it will fully open up within like 24 hours in that room temperature type of environment. So definitely get on top of it if you have a lot of lilies coming, if you need to store them, because this is not an ideal stage to store. So now I wanna talk about some of the lily varieties that I'm growing and that I have absolutely fallen in love with. And what I did this year was because it was my first year growing lilies and after taking the lily workshop, I realized that there were a ton of lily varieties that I could choose from, but I didn't want to put all my eggs into one basket in the sense that a lot of times the minimum for the bulb type that I'm trying to buy is like 300. And so one, I wasn't sure if the florists were going to want Lily. So that's a completely different video. And I wasn't sure if, if the florists didn't want all one color, how they would do with retail. So I decided to do a mix. I've been ordering from Ownings, Ownings, however you say their name. Uh, they do a mixed bulb crate. They do both LA hybrids and they also do OT hybrids. So I chose the OT hybrids because some of them have doubles. So for example, these are OT hybrids. These are not rose lilies. A lot of people keep on thinking that these are rose lilies. So I'm glad I did the OT hybrids for that reason. Now, the downside of doing OT hybrids versus LA hybrids is that OT hybrids have fragrance. So LA hybrids don't have any fragrance and it's both a pro and a con. I'm not the biggest fan of how lilies smell. Eric, my husband, really likes how they smell. So it's kind of a preference type of thing. But so far um, from my experience, a lot of people kind of don't care about the smell, especially those who I'm selling to. Now that being said, those who I'm selling to want lily. So obviously they're self-selecting uh, and the people who don't want uh, lily smelling or the smell of lilies in their house are not buying them. So let's talk about what some of these ones are that I'm growing. This one here is called Gaucho, and I'm gonna put a photo over here. This is what it looks like. I think that this one is gonna do a little bit more better on the retail front. We'll see how it does at the Flores Co-op. Last week I, brought, I bought some there and no one uh, bit, but there weren't a lot of events. So kind of hard to discern if that was just a timing thing or just not a desirable flower color. This one over here I said is called Corcovado. There's two stems over here. I've not yet had a Corcovado open up. So I'm gonna put a stock imagery over here. It's a beautiful yellow. When the tu tulip, when the lily workshop demonstrated lilies, they had a lot of Corcovados blooming. And so I knew exactly what this looked like. I was excited to get it in the mix. And it was, um, it, it's, it's a lily that I've been looking forward to. In fact, there are some lilies that I am perennializing outside, meaning I'm not growing them in crates and Corcovado is one of them. So I'm really excited for this one to open up. This over here is Unique. So Unique is a double and getting stuck. This is what Unique looks like when she opens. Lots of layers over here. Uh, I'm going to be curious to see how this does with, with floral designers, especially those who do event work, because I can see this working really well in the bouquet. The nice thing about the doubles is that they aren't as big and showy as normal lilies, or I mean, the OT hybrids, I'll say, because normal lilies are actually not as big. At least that's the feedback that I've gotten from retail customers. They're, they were surprised to see how big and lush some of the blooms were. So this makes a lot more workable in a bouquet and it and the double layers just make it feel a little bit more special, I guess is the word. So the doubles are something that I really definitely want to grow a little bit more of. And it's something that I'll be more selective if I'm choosing single varieties. Now, this one over here is called Curiosity. So again, another double. Some of the other doubles that I'm growing that came in the mix are Snowboard, which is also another white one. I don't have an example over here, but overall, you know, they start off looking like this. And at first it was like, is this lily bulb size right in terms of the flower bud? Because it was looking so much smaller than something like a Corcovado, which if I, can get the stem 
like like look how much bigger this is compared to this but the doubles are going to look like this size and the singles are going to look a lot more like this size so yes something that i would definitely grow again i was a little bit afraid about growing whites because i was afraid the pests would get to them but i think if you harvest at the right stage then it's fine uh what else is there uh i grew a peach colored lily called zelmira absolute favorite by far that one has won florists and retail customers over so here's a photo and though the bunches that i brought to my co-op that had zelmira were the ones that sold out so definitely something i would focus on growing in the future if i'm not growing mixes i also was growing something called snowboard and something called stratosphere both are pinks not sure if they are tulips or if there are lilies that i would selectively choose to grow because they're very pink and i feel like even though they are very good for event work for whatever reason the pink is just a little too run-of-the-mill for lilies and lilies are still not highly sought after by florists so again another topic for another video i've also grown Menorca, which is an orange LA hybrid. So no scent there. I bought that in a separate order from Leo Burby US. And that one looked really pretty, except it got papery really quickly and the vase life was not as great. I don't know if that was just my one-time experience with that. So if anyone has grown Menorca and can let me know what their, how it turned out for them, please let me know in the comments below. To wrap up this video, this was the harvest that I got from earlier, uh, right after working out. And every day I've been getting harvests like this. So I've had three secessions of, I'm sorry, now four secessions of getting 250 of the mixed varieties uh, every three to four weeks. And I would say that in each box of the 250, I'm getting a few varieties packed anywhere from 20 to 30 of each of those varieties. So you do the math on that and I'm getting anywhere from like, I don't know, like seven to eight varieties per, per box. So it's really good in terms of letting me try out different varieties, testing different colors and that kind of stuff. Um, what else is there to say about Lily? So the reason why I really come to appreciate them is because number one, they look freaking fantastic in a bouquet all by themselves. Here is a photo of some lilies that have opened up. This is a six stem bunch. Usually I do five stem bunches for my CSA uh, because there are so many flower buds on each stem that five makes such a big impact. So at my last farmer's market, I sold six stem bunches for $30. So I'm valuing each at $5. And that is a very fair retail price, especially for the amount of buds that people are getting. Uh, people have been loving how big and lush these are. So again, these are the Oriental Trumpet hybrids that I'm predominantly growing. The second reason why I love lilies is because I have with confidence that if I know when to harvest and can store them in my refrigerator, I have enough stems to commit for a CSA. And if I'm doing five or six stem bunches per bouquet, I can calculate just how many I, how many customers I can take on. And this is really different than planting something, even something that's gonna cut and come again. Like I have a lot of press, pest pressure this year, not saying that lilies are pest free, they are certainly not pest free, but it's, it feels like for some reason there is more of a degree of certainty, especially once it gets to a certain stage. Uh, I did have aphids on my lilies, but the ladybugs completely resolved it. And so far I've not lost a single lily stem due to pest pressure. I've lost some lily stems due to bud abortion because of improper watering, but that's a different story. And then last but not least, I find that because these are in five to six stem bunches, lilies are highly profitable. So when I'm buying these mixed crates of 250 bulbs, it comes out to $180 all in, including shipping. So we're talking about roughly 75 cents a bulb. Now, because I only need five or six, you do the math and I'm selling these anywhere from 20 to $30. Usually like we'll call it around $25. You know, I'm making close to $20 per bouquet, including time, because it's most of the time I would say is planting the bulb. 
Uh, the harvesting is pretty easy. You literally just strip the stem as you saw and I put it into a cooler. The making of the straight stem bouquets is also very easy because I just rubber band it and then I put it into a sleeve. The other time consuming part is I am constantly going out on a walk to look at if there's any pest pressure, if there's any of that scarlet lily beetle. So obviously that stuff all takes time, but I'm out on the farm anyway, looking at other stuff. So that stuff is always just routine anyway. So lilies, like fantastic crop. Um, I'm starting to really love things that are programmable. So bulbs tend to be programmable, meaning that you can succession plant, you can have some sort of certainty in terms of when they will bloom. So a lot of lilies that I'm growing are anywhere from like 100 to 120 days. And you factor in a little bit of the heat and day length. So there's some variability, but for the most part, I know when to expect them, which is awesome. So there's gonna be a lot more to come on lilies. This is probably also a good time for me to plug my Patreon. So if I've helped you before, if you want more information, this a lot of this will be in blog form. I'm gonna put photos, put some more information. The Patreon link is below and also on the screen for the price of $5 a month you get unlocked content into, uh, we'll call it written posts that complement some of my YouTube videos. And it's also another way to support stuff that I am doing. So yeah, let me know if you have any comments below, what other content you'd like to see about lilies, and I will see you in the next video.